climate change is no longer a maybe assumption. It's uh, on the today's everybody's top agenda and we all need to take responsibility for this. Climate change will shape the way people live and the economy runs and it's uh, really something that we should all be concerned of. Governments, uh, individuals, companies, institutions, we all need to do something on this matter. Otherwise, our world won't be livable in the future. So this is a very important topic. The real estate sector is very carbon heavy. Why? Because it stands for, for more than a third of the CO2 emission. Why? Because the way you build building and the way you use building, it emits a lot of CO2. Let's take a couple of examples. For instance, when you build a new building, you need uh, windows, you need concrete, you need bricks, and to build this material, to transport it, to install it, uh, it requires a lot of energy, a lot of material, a lot of transformation, and this emits a lot of CO2. My second example is the use of the building. Uh, it's what we call the scope one and two very often, but to run the building, to provide services to this building, lifts, uh, heat, uh, water, uh, lighting, you need energy uh, to uh, use it and to run the building. And this also should go down in order to reduce the impact in terms of CO2 emissions. There is a plan which is commonly shared into the market, which is to uh, hit uh, net zero and to transition this industry towards a net zero goal by 2050. This is a very, very big challenge. And I have to say that I'm quite against to see companies to disclose these objectives for 2030, 2040, 2050, without having all the time in mind what it requires in terms of investment, in terms of core business processes to update, in terms of data to collect, in terms of stakeholders to convince in order to reduce the impact. Luckily, there is solutions today in order to make it happen, both high-tech and low-tech solutions. In order to tackle this uh, challenge and to help the industry to transition towards net zero, there are solutions. These solutions are fourfold. The first one is to get the data in order to figure out what is my most polluting asset and what is my least polluting asset and what should I do in order to reduce the impact of these buildings. The second objective is to offer the right insights to make the right decisions in order to reduce the impact of buildings, refurbishing an asset, selling an asset, purchasing an asset, and doing the right thing in order uh, to reduce the impact. How? Examples. There are five ways uh, to reduce uh, the CO2 impact of a given building. The first one is to insulate the building. Outdoor wall insulation, indoor wall insulation, the second one is to replace, refurbish HVAC equipment and other equipment that consumes energy, such as a boiler with a heat pump, for instance. The third uh, leverage uh, is to regulate the HVAC and di different equipments in order to just consume energy for the right objective and not consume energy during nights, for instance, with lighting system working during nights. The fourth uh, leverage uh, is to tr work on the maintenance, uh, such as changing the filters of uh, air handling unit in order to reduce the energy necessary to provide fresh air and a good indoor air quality. And the last one on the list, which is the most important, is working on behaviors, pushing users to change their behaviors using steps instead of lifts, reducing the temperature, for instance, in order to reduce the impact of the asset. These is an example for the second uh, objective. A very good example is the, what we call the cross temperatures. You know, it's kind of crazy, but people t in buildings, in let's say office buildings, they tend to ask a very high temperature in winter, such as putting 22, 23 degrees in the office, and they are, tend to ask for low temperature in summer, 18, 90 degrees. It's a little bit stupid, you know, it's uh, awkward uh, to ask this because it should be the opposite, actually. In some countries, there is a regulation to prevent uh, people from doing it, but practically speaking, it's not. So there, you need both raising awareness and technology to push people to behave properly in terms of temperature. Once you have collected the data to get a comprehensive overview of the performance of the portfolio and each of these assets, you know, knowing what is the most polluting asset, what is the least one, once you have built the insights, the net zero carbon pathway, the investment plans to figure out what to do with your asset, then comes the time to act and it's time to act. You need to convince and push all stakeholders, subcontractors, property managers, tenants, engineering firms, consulting firms to work together in order to implement things. And the market 
to implement things is absolutely huge. Some studies in the US come to the conclusion that five trillion dollars are necessary to transition towards net zero. This is completely crazy, but we need these investments in order to make it happen. We have no choice. Once you start implementing things, you need to figure out if the return of the investment is okay. You need to understand if you've been good at protecting the value of your asset, if your assets are more attractive for tenants, if you comply with the regulation. All of this need to be monitored, need to be assessed. And this is the time where I start the monitoring of the impact. And it's interesting to see that climate is the main topic, this is a priority for everybody. But you also need to do no significant harm on other topic, other ESG topic. And you know my uh, gut feeling on it? You, we won't be able to transition towards net zero if we don't take care about the social impact of it. A good question is, will the real estate uh, industry will meet this climate change? I hope so, but it has to. And you know, I, by nature, I'm an optimistic person. And when I think I'm like, oh, more pessimistic because it will be hard. But I'm very optimistic when I see the industry organizing itself, when I see all this energy uh, around these types of fairs, where people are all willing to have a positive impact, especially on climate change. So I think we'll make it.